My name is Ron Martinez. I'm American Latino, and I'm a former senior executive of Bank of America and president and CEO of Gemtech. I absolutely believe in the American dream. I am the American dream. My dad's the American dream. His family's the American dream. That's why they came to America and became U.S. citizens. So I believe in the American dream, but we got to keep that American dream alive. My grandfather was from Michoacan, Mexico, and my grandmother was from Guadalajara, Mexico. And my family took over six years to get their American citizenship, and they were very proud of that. And they settled in Santa Maria, California, where my grandfather was a laborer, a uh, farmer picked in the fields. He would get a truckload of primarily family members and other uh, Mexicans, and they would farm uh, different lands. Uh, strawberries, they would pick strawberries. My dad was a picker from the age of six to the age of about 16, and that's how he grew up. My dad was very competitive. Uh, he grew up uh, very competitive. He grew up, and he would tell me when he was picking in the fields, his dad would come up to him and say, if you don't get an education, you will be doing this the rest of your life. And my dad was very proud. He went on to college, he graduated from Cal Poly. He wears his college ring, and I have my college ring with pride. I mean, he wasn't a, a kisser or a hugger. He just wasn't. My mom was. My mom was the, the, the hugger and the kisser, but my dad was very strict and, and very focused on us kids uh, being successful in life. Uh, we had to be the president or the vice president, the captain of the sports team, state champion, you name it, we did that. And my dad strived for us to be the best we can be. But never ever use your last name as an excuse why you can't be. I believe young Latinos are not given the tools or the mindset to succeed. I went to a nephew's wedding a year ago, which was fantastic, the, the mariachi band, which my grandfather used to play every Sunday loudly. I loved it, and it was fantastic. But I had some discussions with some of my relatives, and 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 my nephew, one of my nephews just said, you know, Ron, I can't succeed because I'm a Latino. Uh, it's not fair. Oh, and I, I, was, I was taken aback. I was like, what? I go, uh-uh, no. Get that out of your head. You can't, when there's a will, there's a way. I'll help you and I'll help coach you and help guide you, which I do with a lot of my kids' friends today. I will help you and guide you. But don't have that mindset you can't move forward because you're a Latino. You can. Hard work and education and you will succeed. Your last name should not make a difference, period. And that should be the same with the Latino kids today. So my dad, Frank Martinez, uh, would take us kids, or myself, or my brother, or whoever it was, after we won a game, and only if we won a game, or if I did well in a game, maybe baseball or soccer, he would take us down to Dairy Queen. That was the big reward, to get a 25 cent ice cream cone, and it made a difference. If we didn't play well, he would say, you didn't play well, Ron, and I didn't get an ice cream cone, but when I did, I did. And it was fun, and I enjoyed it. If it was a night game, my dad go, let's go to the Porsche dealership. And everybody's gone, because he was embarrassed, and we were embarrassed, we couldn't afford a Porsche. So we go in the windows and we look at the Porsches. He says, someday, someday, if you work hard, you can have one of these cars. So that day came, I was in Texas when I ran Central United States for the bank, and I was telling my wife uh, that story, and my wife goes, we need to do something. I said, you're right. So I bought my dad a Porsche jacket, and inside the jacket had a set of Porsche keys. He had no idea what we were doing, and he pulled the keys. I go, Dad, you have something in your pocket. He goes, oh, what is this, a remote control car? He's looking around the floor for a remote control car. I said, no, I have something for you in the garage. He walked out in the garage, and he got teary-eyed. It was a Porsche for my dad. And um, that was something else. It was something else to see for him to get that. Since I was a little kid, he said, you want a dream to have something like that. And my dream was to own one, as well as give my dad one. And he got one. It was a moving moment. When we were a little kid, look at that, and then all of a sudden, bam, here's your car. He was teary-eyed, and he was excited, and he couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. 
but it was the one of the most satisfying experiences I ever had. I believe in equal opportunity, not equal results. And I'll give you an example of that. When I first came out of college at Millican and Company, I was sitting there working. And again, I received the, the award Rookie of the Year for the company. And I'll never forget, I was sitting there and working. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon, five, and I would work till seven, eight o'clock at night. It didn't, I didn't matter to me. I wanted to move up in the company and be successful. I had an individual who's about 48 years old, came over to me, he said, Ron, he goes, you can work as hard as you want. He goes, why don't you come to the, uh, the Chicago Cubs game with us right now? I said, I can't, I have work to do. He says, so you're, you're leading the country. I was number one in the country for sales at that time. And he goes, so what? He goes, you may beat me in sales and be number one, but with raises, there's not much of a difference. It doesn't matter if you work hard. And I looked at him, I'm like, what? It does matter. So he went to his Chicago Cubs game and I vowed at that point, when I become an executive, a leader, uh-uh, it's based on performance, it's based on merit. And you know what? I was rewarded. I was rewarded with the award Rookie of the Year of the company. I was awarded by having trips and I was rewarded by having bonuses and moved my career up. Not by going to the Cubs game and, and skating off of work. I got there because I worked hard. So I believe in equal opportunities. Is America racist? No, I don't think it is. And you're going to have your factions of people. Sure, you're going to have your factions of people, but I never felt as a Latino man growing up, I didn't feel that at all. Now, you're going to have your pockets, but the people I hired, um, African-American people, Latino people, Hispanics, you name it, it had nothing to do with their last name, how they looked, their race. It had nothing to do with it. You know, I hired who I believe was the best person for the job. And there may have been some people who, who questioned that. The HR department would say, hey, we need to look at this or we need to do that. And my response back was, hey, I'm gonna put the best person on the team to be successful. Because it's not just that individual who's gonna be affected, but the people around that individual will be affected. So we need to put the right people in the right positions. And as executive, I would push back. Some people did and some people did not, I pushed back. It's almost extortion what's going on now, with people demanding you have to have certain uh, Latino men or you have to have uh, African-American or women or gay, straight, Muslim, it's wrong. It should be the best person for the team, but we need leaders to stand up and say that, but people are afraid. We need strong leaders. We're hearing it from the top today. We gotta continue to do that. Come on leaders, come on executives, stand up. And say, look, we want the best person for the job, not we have to have a quota or something like that. We should be the best person. It should be based on merit, not quotas. The leadership at the top is important, which is a good thing but the leadership at the local level is just as important. Some things that are happening in, in some cities and some mayors and things going on is crazy. Freedom of speech is now being stopped. And if you don't go their way, you're gonna, there's gonna be violence? That's ridiculous. This country is built on freedom. This country is built on capitalism. Don't go with this mob mentality. Come on, we have to step up and stand for what you believe in. What your faith has taught you, what your family taught you, what your friends have taught you. Be the unsilent majority. It's up to you to take that leadership position. Take the risk, stick your neck out. You'll feel better doing that. You'll feel good about yourself. And you can do it. The American dream to me is giving people the opportunity to succeed, to achieve what they want to do in life. It's here. You just have to go for it. What I would say to young Latinos, and I, I coach and I mentor a lot of my kids' friends, I would tell young Latinos, listen, what do you want to do in life? Do you want to be a cook? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to work in a, uh, as, a, as a coder? Do you want to work in sales or management? Whatever, an art, whatever it is. Whatever your dream is, you can get there. My dad taught me, he's a you know, first generation Hispanic, Latino, hard work. It's in the DNA, hard work and education, and you will succeed. And it seems like as generations go on, they're losing it. They're being taught handouts, the government will provide. No, the government will not provide. 
you can provide for yourself. That is in your heritage. That is in your background. Don't forget that. Extremely hard working people. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to the government. Don't listen to some of these educators. Listen to your family. Believe in your faith and you can move forward. That's what I learned from my parents. You can do it. You put your mind to it, you can do it. And that's the key. So I believe in the American dream, but we got to keep that American dream alive. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video at PragerU with the Americanos. Please consider giving a tax-free donation to keep these episodes going strong so we can get out the message to America. Thanks.